Today, we're making water rockets. This is probably the last video for a while on this channel, so I want it to go off with a bang. Many people out there probably just think that water rockets are some lame school project, but I want to prove you wrong. So I've built a high power water rocket that can reach over 100 miles per hour. Before I show you a cool video of the rocket flying, let's have a look at how I made it and the various tests I went through to get to the flight. <laughs> I can't believe people actually drink this shit. It's got no lemon in it. It's just chemicals and water. One thing that can be said about this that's good. It makes a good drain cleaner. I'm trying to contract this bottle so I can splice it. But I think I may have f***ed up. I think the water was way too hot. Good job I've got plenty more bottles. This is a pair of spliced bottles. So essentially I contracted one using hot water. That allows me to insert it. <laughs> Doesn't always work. But in theory it allows me to insert it inside the other one. It allows me to insert it inside the other one like this. Gorilla glue. Damp it. Glue it. Grip it. <laughs> right, let's damp it. <laughs> so I need to damp the inside of the surface here. Then it says apply the glue. Then, in theory, I just have to get this in here. And it should magically seal. I don't have a vice to clamp this, but I think bricks have served me well in the past. So that's one pressure vessel made. But for a high power water rocket, I need a lot more than that. For this video, I've got three different water rockets to test, so let me just run through them. The first one is just a normal bottle, but I suspect it will probably outperform either of the other two that I made. The second is essentially two bottles spliced together, but I've added a ring here that should restrict the flow of water, because I have a theory running that if I allow the water to go out the end more slowly, I'll actually get more height from the rocket. The last one is this mega rocket. It's made out of six bottles put together, and to be entirely honest, I think it'll just explode on the launch pad. So this rocket is 48 inches high, or just over 120 centimeters. That's, if my maths is right, four foot. This is a quick test to see how many pumps it takes for the bung to burst out of the bottom of the rocket. I think that was 22. To achieve a higher pressure, I need to find a way to hold these bottles down whilst I pump them up. So I'm going to have to build some kind of launch stand. These rods hold the neck of the bottle in place whilst I pump it up, and then I simply have to pull the string to release it. Three, two, one. I think that everything's ready for the first tests, so it's time to take it somewhere a bit more open than my back garden, because I don't want to lose anything. Before we do that though, 
I think it would be useful to know how much water I actually need to put in the rocket. So I wrote the simulation code to find the optimal solution. It turns out that the best volume of water to put in is around 30-40% to of the empty volume of the rocket. What I personally really like about the slow-mo footage of that launch is the fact that you can see the water raining down even after the bottle is long out of sight. I think this is a testament to how powerful even a small water rocket can be. Next, I'm going to test the second water rocket, the one with the restricted flow. Evidently, my theory is wrong. Restricting the flow of water makes it go, well, less high and less stable. I think the wind knocked it over like this, and then it just sprayed water all over me, and that was not fun. I'm going to try the medium-sized water rocket again, but this time I'm going to use the end that doesn't have the restrictor on it. Here is the moment that I realised the launch strings had snapped. To capture the flight of the rocket from a different perspective, I think it would be interesting if I used a camera on the top. This camera can connect to my phone and I can record using this app. The issue is I have to be able to power this because normally the power supply would come from the drone, but obviously I'm not going to stick the drone inside the top of the rocket. One solution to this problem is to use this power pack. So if I plug this cable in here, and then plug this into the camera. You can see that the light comes on on the camera. And if I connect to the relevant network, the app crashed. There we go. So we can see that this camera is connected. The issue with using this is that this power pack is really heavy. In fact, this weighs more than the whole of the rest of the rocket. So this isn't really a viable solution. An alternative solution to using this power pack is to use the power supply module that I used in my clone trooper helmet. So here is a module where I can plug a USB cable in here and connect a nine volt battery here, and it can supply the five volts that this camera needs. It's going to be sad to see this helmet dismantled, but I need the parts. I'm done with those small rockets now. It's time for the big one. Here's the rocket on the launch stand. Notice that I've added fins to the side to improve the stability of the flight, because the normal bottles are kind of going all over the place, and I really don't want that to happen to this. The camera is now situated on the top, ready for flight. So I've made this funnel and pipe attachment to help fill the uh, bottom rocket. I really wasn't expecting the top of the rocket to be this crushed. The onboard camera failed, 
And there's two possible reasons for this. The first reason is that the SD card popped out the side, and the second reason is that the power cut out. Either of them is very plausible, as both the power cable and the SD card had popped out. Um, but then you might ask, well, why does the footage cut out in flight? Why doesn't it cut out immediately on impact of the ground? The reason for this is because the data from the camera is written onto the SD card on a delay. It has to be processed first before it can be sent to the SD card for storage. Now, this means that the crash footage itself was still being processed when the power cut out or the SD card popped out, which is why I don't have access to that footage. The speed of the rocket can be determined by analysing the frames. The camera is operating at 240 frames per second, and it takes 6 frames for the rocket to cover its own height. This gives an estimated max speed of 108 miles per hour. I'm really happy with the results of this rocket, and I think it's an excellent way to wrap up this channel for now. This is not going to be the last video on this channel, for sure but it'll be the last one for a while, so I have to go back to university and I have to study. So until the next video, stay dodgy.